What's up, everybody, and welcome to Standing Out, a show about sales, marketing, and leadership. I'm Trey Griggs, your host and the founder and CEO of Beta Consulting Group. We're so excited that you are with us today. Happy New Year out there. Hope your 2024 is off to a wonderful start. Do me a favor, if you will. Check us out at betaconsultinggroup.com. See how we are helping companies with their messaging. You got to get the words right. You got to tell a great story. And that's what we're all about is helping with the messaging and helping create testimonials so your customers can sell for you. So when you go to our website, click on that button that says schedule a meeting with yours truly. Tell us your story. We'll help you write yours. Also follow us on social media. I'm out there at Trey Griggs 24. You can also find Beta Consulting Group everywhere as well. Engage with our content. Tell us what you like. Roast us a little bit. Give us your best insult. We can take it. We're tough. But engage with us. We'd love to connect with you on social media. And before we get our show started today, I also want to make sure that we... Thank our sponsor, SPI Logistics, for making the show possible. Listen, if you're a freight broker and you're just kind of tired of the back office, the admin stuff that goes along with running a freight brokerage, and you just want to stay in your sweet spot, working with customers and, and booking freight, be sure to check them out at success.spi3pl.com. They're going to take all that off of your plate. They got the technology, the systems, the back office support to help you stay in your sweet spot and truly thrive. Reach out to them. Let them know you heard about them right here on Standing Out. Again, that's success.spi3pl.com. Dot com. All right, everybody, it is time to welcome our guest on the show today. I'm very excited for this guy to be on the show. He's a good friend of mine out of Kansas City, just wrote his first book and is doing some amazing work for companies around the topic of trust. Please welcome to the show, the founder and CEO of Trust Centric Consulting, Corey Shear. It's good to see you. Really look at you. Look at you. Looking all good. How are you, my friend? Doing good. How are you doing? I'm not even what song. I don't know what song that was. I think we just chose one for you randomly. You know, I whatever. said, you choose. I trust you completely with my walk-in <laughs> song. So that's how much trust I have in you all. Kind of a kind of a mellow tune we went with. I don't know. I'm not sure what that says about you, but we want mellow. So there you go. That's what I you like get. it. Yeah. Keep Corey, it's good to see you, man. We you had too. a chance to have breakfast recently. Man, it is so good to see you. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself and a little bit about trust-centric consulting. You bet. Yeah, we, you and I were, uh, we were eating early breakfast not too long ago. It's good to see you again. And uh, my name is Corey, and I have uh, four amazing kids. My wife and I, uh, and our four kids, we live in the Kansas City area, and we have two in college, two at Mizzou, and then we have two in middle school. They're both in seventh grade. We do not have twins. We call them functional twins. We have an adopted <laughs> son, and then we have another son that was born seven months later. So we have four kids and um, the company that I lead is called Trust Centric Consulting. And what we do is we help organizations assess their current level of trust among their employees and their teams. And then we walk alongside them with data and a proven framework and then a blueprint so that they can improve their workplace culture, which obviously affects things like retention, advocacy, loyalty, productivity, all of the great things about an amazing organization are deeply affected by whether or not trust is present. So that's what we get to do with our incredible clients. Yeah, and we're going to dig into that here a little bit more in just a minute because trust is one of those kind of obscure uh, words that what does it really mean? How do you build it? How do you measure it? So I'm excited we're going to get into all of that. But before we do that, a couple of housekeeping things. First of all, we appreciate you being on the show. This is round two for you, second time on the show. Do you yes. want a coffee mug or do you want a water bottle from the show? We're going to send you whichever one you want. What do you like? I'm going to go coffee mug. And mm, I'm, looking coffee mug. Forward, I'm looking forward to the bobblehead 
one day. <laughs> I, I you know, we'll, we'll just have to see about that. All right. We'll just have to see about that. But I will say this. We did have breakfast recently. We had breakfast at First Washington in, in the Penance. You can kind of see this picture here overlaying right now. And what's really cool is not only is it the, the book that we talked about, your book launch, we're going to talk about in just a minute, but that booth behind us, I think the one that either your head's on or my head is on, I'm not sure which one, that was the one we had our first breakfast a year ago. And the idea of the book and Trust Center Consulting was just getting started. And so it was really cool to be back at that place and kind of revisit that moment and to see just how far you've come, man. I mean, I'm incredibly impressed. You're a doer. You got a lot done. I mean, it's got to feel good to see that picture and to think, man, what else happened in the last year? It has been a complete roller coaster, and but I'm grateful for that. I don't ever want that to sound like a complaint, but I, I've i learned so much as a solopreneur, a new business owner, full time with this work, taking the, you know, taking the leap from a very stable job into now what I get to do, which is uh, more fluid and, and dynamic. And um, it's it presents a lot of different challenges, but also I, I've never looked back and I'm grateful and I'm super excited about this year coming up because I've learned so much in 2023 that I hope to be able to apply that in 2024 in service to my clients. All right. So before we jump into that real quick, I want to ask you about your entrepreneurship journey, because as you just mentioned, and as many of us have experienced who are now entrepreneurs, it's hard to go from that stable job, that steady paycheck, especially when you're supporting a family, you got kids that are growing up, going to college, whatever it is. It's really hard to make that jump. What was it for you that um, kind of led you in that direction to say, no, this is what we're going to do right now in this moment. We're not going to we're not going to back off from that. Talk about that you know, mental transition for you to go from that stable job to now betting on yourself. It was it was hard and it took, you know, it took a couple of really significant reflective months and a lot of counsel from a lot of trusted people in order for me to make that decision. I also would say that, you know, you, you've got to be, before you do that, you have to be really clear that you have a product or a service that it is, it is um, attractive for other people to want to hire you for. And that's obviously very critical. And so one of the one of the things that I did for a couple of years with my company was I just did a lot of testing and I was very part time. It was more of a hobby. I did what I would call it was like a Christmas money business where you try to get a couple thousand, few thousand bucks over the course of the year to make your Christmas better. And then after a couple of years of that, I just I realized that uh, the biggest constraint on growing the business was my time. And I was not going to be able to have a full time effect of my business by doing it very part time. And so all that to say, I made the decision to do it. And um, my number one focus right now as a small business owner is doing what I call as protecting the net, meaning really being mindful of expenses, investments and in certain things within the organization and ensuring that um, that I'm being very mindful that every dollar that comes into the business has a direct effect on the livelihood of our family. And so having full visibility into both of those, that's what's keeping me disciplined to not go invest in all sorts of things that I would want to, knowing that this is a young business, it's growing, and I'm grateful for that. But having that, you know, that kind of um, highly sensitive approach to the business, I think, is something that's really helpful for any new entrepreneur. Yeah, and I think your guidance is, is very wise. You and I, we, we would have either been great partners or probably the worst partners because I'm the exact opposite. I started a company without knowing if my product would actually make it. I was a little bit more crazy and I tend to not be as good at defending the net. I'm a little bit more of like scoring points. points. So I'm going to use that analogy in terms of spending money and investing money. So we're a little different in that regard, but it shows there's more than one way to skin a cat. There's more, more than one way to make it work. And so for those of you that are crazy like me, go for it, get started. For those of you that need a little bit more time, do the Christmas business. I like that. That's actually a really good analogy to have a Christmas business, make a few thousand bucks, learn along the way, test your ideas out and then launch. And certainly all that work that you did helped you to really accelerate in this past year. I mean, you've really made some inroads. You finished your first book. Uh, Trust Center Consulting now has regular customers, regular clients. So I think it's, I think it's just phenomenal. What was it about the journey where you said the book is important? I want to get this knocked out. Yeah, the book, the book has been, it's been a goal of mine for a long time. Didn't really know what topic I wanted to write. I, I would have kind of like fits and stops where I would, Ooh, there's a cool idea for a book. And then I would write 
a paragraph or a chapter. And then, you know, in my Google folder, I've got six or seven different kind of very initial versions of a book. But this was not only an opportunity for me to kind of share the information that I've learned over the course of the last several years with my research and my doctoral work and now my client work, but I wanted something to be portable for any organization, any employee within the organization. You know, I tend to work with organizations primarily with their uh, executive level leadership. So I wanted something that every employee in the organization would be able to hold and digest and read and for it to be a development tool for them. Also, strategically, this book writing process allowed me to gain a sharper focus on what it is that TrustCentric does as an organization. And in a lot of ways, this has been a manifesto for my business. And this is the kind of focus that I think is important for an entrepreneur because there's so many different options and ways to think about things and do things. But for me, getting it down on paper has been great. And then the last thing I would say is somebody told me many months ago that when you write a book, it's basically the best version of a business card ever. And <laughs> yeah. there's something about handing a book to somebody or connecting with somebody on LinkedIn and just saying, let me just throw a book in the mail for you and they'll get it in a few days. And then they are now invited into the manifesto of your company and what you're passionate about. Like, what a powerful medium with physical print copy like that. Yeah, it's it's really genius. And so the, the book is Closing the Trust Gap. I'm very fortunate I have a signed copy. Look at that, everybody. I get a signed copy from Corey, hand-delivered. And I wanted to ask you about this because, you know, as I've been reading through the book, I, I really enjoy it. Very well written. You're, you're a great uh, speaker and, and communicator no matter what. But you write in here at one point, you said, organizational trust is like electrical power. You don't realize how much you depend on it until it's gone. I love that analogy. And I think there's a lot of truth in that. And, and one of the things that you focus on is, is really understanding or being able to evaluate with metrics, with numbers, how you're doing as an organization when it comes to trust. Talk a little bit about some of that work that you're doing for companies and, and why that gap exists. I mean, the book is closing the trust gap. What, what, what's the cause of that trust gap? Well, there's so many factors that cause the trust gap. Uh, and, you know, one of them is just when you have an organization that's full of people, there's opportunities for gaps to occur because we have different ways of thinking. We have different experiences. We have different personality dynamics. We have different uh, ways that we measure success. And so those working dynamics uh, create opportunities for gaps to be to be created. And if left unchecked, and if normalized within an organization, those gaps and trusts can really become problematic. And the other thing that has occurred in the last couple of years is with COVID and the great resignation. I mean, in 2022, 50 million people left their jobs. And so that massive turnover of a third of the workforce left their organization. And so when you think about how that affects uh, the organization where the employees left, also employees going into a new organization and this, this kind of new dynamic with new people, all of these create opportunities where they can have a gap because of what they believe to be true in the organization may or may not be true. And when there's no communication, when there's no commitment to problem solving, when you have people who may not necessarily be as competent as they could or should be to do the job, then these are, these are the opportunities. I call them these are like the seeds of distrust that can begin to be uh, laid down. And then over the course of time, those seeds will grow. As those seeds grow, it creates a forest. When there's a forest created, it becomes very, very difficult to navigate. So uh, the role of a leader is to ensure that you're identifying, are there any current gaps in trust? If so, what is the dimension? What, how wide are they? And then how do we close the gap? I also feel that it's not about investing time and energy and money into bridging the trust gap. Bridges are expensive and they require a ton of engineering. Like, let's fill it in. Let's close the gap. Then we don't have to worry about building bridges. Let's just close it. And then that way we can walk on common ground as opposed to worrying about creating another structure that spans something that is problematic in an organization. 
Yeah, and to be clear of what we're talking about with the trust gap, we're talking about how leaders perceive trust in organization and how frontline employees perceive it and what's the difference between those. Because a lot of times leaders think everything is going well. They think there's a high level of trust within the organization. But a lot of times when you talk to the front end workers and mid-level managers some, somewhere in there, it doesn't match up. How do you assess that? I mean, how do you even get to understanding what that gap looks like from a you know numerical data perspective? We, so we do a quantitative approach uh, primarily where we have what's, what we call our organizational trust assessment. It's 49 data points. It takes seven minutes to take the assessment. It's completely anonymous. It also, uh, there are qualifiers within the assessment. So it asks, how long have you been in the organization? What level of the organization are you in? What is your perceived role in shaping organizational culture? So when we get all of those variables, plus the data, we can then start cross-tapping that data to paint a clearer picture of what their current gaps are in trust. We also nest all of that data within this theoretical framework that we call the structure of trust. And so we ask questions around each of the three building blocks of trust, one around competency, the building block of competency with several questions, and then around problem solving, and then around demonstrating care for others. So these are the things that as we begin to evaluate and kind of hold up the mirror in front of an organization, we can then start introducing the framework, get them on the same page, and then start developing a blueprint so that they can move forward and start creating conditions for a better reality within their workplace culture. So the cliff notes of it is if you have somebody who's competent at their job, who has the ability to solve problems and who cares for people, those are kind of the, the, the building blocks for That's really right. establishing um, uh, an organization that has a high level of trust throughout. That's exactly right. Those are the three, those are the three building blocks that's been proven by data to be true in terms of somebody's trustworthiness. And if you think about, so if you think about somebody in your past, maybe a past work experience that you trusted the most, I would bet that they were probably very high on all three of those levels. And then conversely, somebody that you trusted the least, I would assume that at least one of those building blocks was at zero or very, very low. And that's what creates those gaps in trust. And if that it becomes the norm of the organization, it has a dramatic effect on many different KPIs within the organization. And so the challenge is when you're not aware of what the source of the, the gap is, you're only responding to the effect of the gap, that becomes uh, very, very challenging for an organization and frustrating. Yeah, I've definitely had uh, leaders or people within an organization that I, I had low levels of trust with because they just I felt like they didn't know what they were doing or I sort of didn't feel like they cared about me. And it, it impacts how you feel about somebody, how you trust somebody with your career, with your with your job, with your livelihood. All that stuff really matters. It doesn't sound difficult. There's only three building blocks, but yet it is. What are some of the um, you know uh, tips and, 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 and action steps that you provide some of your clients to help overcome some of those? Yeah, the one of my favorite ones is in the building block of care for others, which that is by our data and our research shows that caring for others is the lowest of the three building blocks, typically for an organization. So lowest meaning block. easiest to achieve? No, lowest meaning uh, it's receiving the lowest rating. So it's creating the most amount of distrust because of a uh, lack okay, of care okay. for others. Got it. We typically hire people based on competencies. We train towards that. We have problem solving, you know, overall fairly good problem solving in many organizations, but where we see some of the bigger gaps is when, when we talk about caring for others. From our research, what we see is that the number one way to demonstrate care for others in a practical way is simply to listen to others in a way that is active. So one of the, one of the tools that I share with people is when the next time you're in a conversation, think about the nine one ratio. So nine questions for every answer that you provide. So imagine, your next conversation with a leader or a team member or a frontline employee or a customer, before you offer a suggestion or an answer, you have to ask them nine different questions. Like that nine one ratio, if you do that, if you're consistent in your approach about ultimately putting their needs before your own, that inherently is trust building. And so these are the things where it, you're right, it's not difficult, it is simple. We complicate it because we bring in lots of different 
uh, definitions of what we feel uh, is true within the organization. And as a result of that, it can muddy the water and it begins to create some of these gaps. So simple is true, but it's not necessarily simplistic to strengthen trust because we've got to be committed to that being a priority 100% of the time. You know, I'm not going to lie. Nine questions seems like a lot, which tells me I, I have a lot of work to do in this area. I probably like to talk a little too much and need to ask a few more questions along the way. So it's a, it's a great reminder to, to think about asking more questions and, and listen um, and not be distracted either. I, you know, one thing I found with virtual meetings versus in-person meetings, I mean, if I'm, if I'm with somebody, it seems like it's easier to focus on them and to be connected. In virtual calls, sometimes because we have screens, we've got, you know, cell phone going off or whatever, it seems like it's easier to get distracted. And I think that's a big part of it as well. It's just being really focused in those conversations. Um, again, not, not difficult, but something we struggle with, something we all tend to need a, a little reminder from time to time to, to focus on that. So I love that. It's all in the book. Plus, you also offer um, coaching and consulting as well. So we got the book, but what's the other side of the business? How could people benefit from working with Trust, Trust Center Consulting? Yeah, the main side of the business is uh, four different areas, whether it's consultative work with teams and organizations or executive coaching. I've got lots of clients that I work with from an executive coaching standpoint. I do different workshops, two hour, four hour, full day workshops with executive teams or midline managers. And then the final thing is um, speaking and doing various speaking engagements, including keynotes and one of the highlights for last year in 2023 was I was introduced by you to Jen over at TMSA, and I had the privilege of uh, serving TMSA in the executive summit with an opening keynote. It was a blast. I hung out with them the rest of the day. I learned so much about logistics, and it was awesome. I would absolutely call that experience at the TMSA executive summit a top uh, top experience for 2023. Yeah, I was really excited you got to do that. I was bummed that I didn't get to be there for it, but I'm glad you got to do that. And I'm excited for other events that I'm going to be emceeing that you're going to be speaking at and get a chance to to work together, um, which is awesome. And so I love the fact that you got to do that. I'm sure there's more of that coming in 2024 here as you think about your goals moving forward. Before we get to that, though, quick website, where can people get connected with you to learn more about, more about trust-centric consulting? Yep. Trustcentricconsulting.com is the website for the company, or if you just Google Trust Centric Consulting and then the book, uh, you can go to Amazon and look it up or go to trustgapbook.com. Love it. Very good. Okay. We got to play a game, my friend. This is a new game we've been playing. It's a lot of fun. It is called Wavelength. Okay, here's how it's going to work. We have eight rounds, Corey, and here's what happens is we're going to put up a banner, and that banner is going to have a category and a letter. And what we have to do is we have to think about the same thing to see if we can kind of come up with the same answer. we got to try to get it the same. So we got to be on the same wavelength here to try to figure that out. Do you have anything to write with, like a piece of paper and a pen, by chance? I do. I've got one right, right. here. Very good. We're going to write them down on paper. When you hear the gong, when you hear the gong sound, we'll, we'll play that here real quick just so you know. When you hear the gong sound... That's when we got to display our answers, all right? So uh, you, you only have a little bit of time here, okay? So you're going to write your answer down, whatever you think it is. got to be on the same wavelength. No hints. We'll see how well we do. All right, let's hit it. First one. First option here, a TV show that starts with a B. A TV show that starts with a B. All right, all right. Uh, TV show that starts with a B. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I got two options here, and I'm not sure which one to go with. I have no options right no now. No options. Okay, well, let me see if I can get, get one over to you. Let me see if I can just send one your way. Come on, Wavelength. And it's TV, not movie. TV show. TV show that starts with a B. I know you probably don't watch a lot of TV. Um, that's why I'm kind of thinking I might might be I might have the wrong thing here. But we'll see. This will be our practice round, Corey. This is a practice round. So okay. let's just see. Let's just see what we got here. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, what do you got? I got baseball. That's all I could think about. <laughs> that could be a TV show. <laughs> That'll work. I have the Big Bang Theory. Awesome. I was in between this and the Brady Bunch. I was, I was kind of between the two of those. So I, I went with the Big Bang Theory. There's not a lot of TV shows with B. So there's well, that. Except except those two have double Bs. That's kind of weird. So, okay, that was all right. So that's done. Okay, let's move it on. Next mm -hmm. one. Next one we got here. We got a food that starts with a G. A food. Okay, I think I got one here. Food item that starts with a G. 
food item that starts with a G. <laughs> what do we got? Oh, this could be. So this is going to be good. I can tell you. Okay, what do you got? <laughs> I went garbanzo bean. Wow, that's a that is. <laughs> We're going to I went, again. Oh, that's right. I went grape. Great. <laughs> okay, I think you are friends over at uh, GLS for the, the notepad here. Appreciate that. We have six more rounds. Yeah. Huh? All okay. right. Well, we're over two. It, it can only get better. It can only get better. Okay. A who? This is a movie that starts with a V. We need an easier letter. Movie that starts with a V. Oh wow. Oh wow. Okay. I think this is a movie. I don't know if it is. This might not be a movie, but I'm going to try it. You're writing too many letters. Yeah. I'm writing too off. many letters. Yeah. I can I'm tell off. you. What? How many did you write? I wrote one <laughs> called V. It was a TV show that became a movie. No, I did not know that. I wrote Valentine's Day. Surely that's a movie out there somewhere. I don't know. Or on the, maybe it's on the, what's that network that plays family movies all of the time? Uh, well, Lifetime. Is that Lifetime, one? yeah. One of those, yeah. Might be lifetime. So, uh, okay, all right. Okay, all right. What's the next one? Famous actor with a J. Okay, famous actor with a J. Here we go. Oh, okay. first name. Okay, hold on, hold on. Are we doing first name or last name? First name. First name. It starts with a J. I think we're going to get this one. You think so? Okay, th there's only one that's coming to mind, and I just, I have a feeling this is not it, but I'm going to go with it. Oh, wait, I've got, I'm going to write down two. I'm writing down Jamie Foxx and J-Lo. Oh, man, those are both. <laughs> Jamie Foxx is one of my favorites. The only thing I could think of was John Hamm. I don't know why. I mean, he's not even my favorite. It's just the only thing that came to mind, probably from Top Gun or something. Okay, well, Corey, we're 0 for 4, okay? So um, we got to get at least one. That's the goal. Can we get at least one? Here we go. Song title, R. Song title. Okay. Or. We've got this. Okay. Think, All right. Think old school. Old school. Uh, okay. I'm writing too much, I think. Okay. I got rocking around the Christmas tree. I got oh, gosh. That is old school. They're both old school. They're yes. both old school, but that yours was yours was better than mine. Okay, that was terrible. Okay, we're 0 for 5, everybody. I just want you to know this. This has never happened, Corey. We have never gotten shut out in a game of wavelength. I just want you to know this. This could okay. be record no, no pressure. breaking. <laughs> no pressure. All right. Uh, okay, we got a movie starts with a G. A movie that starts with a G. Oh, man. A movie that starts with a G. Wait, we just talked about a food that started with a G because it was yeah, a grape. Now we're, on a, now we're on a movie that starts with a G. Okay, well, let's go with grape and let's just continue on that. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's bad. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we did we it. Got, we got one. Oh my goodness! That's you, hey, like... you can table talk. You can table talk if it's already been answered like that. We can take. Okay, all right. So that. So that's okay. All right. All right. That's good. Enough. Okay. All right. We got. We got two more. We got a chance to. Okay. Two more TV show that starts with an I. Oh wow. Okay. TV show that starts with an I. Oh man. Oh gosh, I'm blanking. No, no, this isn't good. I'm just glad that we got grapes of wrath. Like that's all that I cared about because I didn't want to be shut okay. out. Okay, I got one. You're not going to get it, but we're going to try. I mean, this is just random. I mean, you might get it, and if you do, that'll be really. Impressive. You got anything? I got nothing. What do you got? Ice road trucking. <laughs> Ice road truckers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, we are one for seven. This might be the worst game of wavelength we've and ever grapes had. Of wrath. <laughs> Grapes of Wrath is fitting. If that's the only one we get, that's actually fitting. That's fitting. Okay. All right. Last one. Final round. Here we go. Final round. And then we're gonna we're gonna call it famous singer. Oh, you. How about okay. famous? Can we go famous band? Famous that's band. Right. Yes. Yeah. Famous band or singer. Yeah. Yeah. Either one. Either one. That's correct. Famous band or singer. Either one. That's right. I know you got this. You too, baby. You too. Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
that was oh that was terrible okay you well know, that we're gonna I have wanted to... to be able to get to a point where you could invite me back without feeling ashamed <laughs> you know, we're, gonna to, we're gonna have to work on wavelength because that was not, not our best one ever okay so we're gonna we're gonna wrap this one up Corey, real quick 2024 is upon us what are some of the goals for 2024 for you for for trust center consulting for the book what are you going after uh yeah the book you know i I really want to find opportunities to where when I'm doing speaking engagements or workshops that mm. that organizations and teams would they would take the book and utilize it as a book study to, to continue the conversation. So that's one of my big goals. And then another goal is I'm in the process of of uh, inviting people in who want to be certified in the assessment and certified in the content that we share and that's off to a really good start. So want to continue to grow that and then ultimately continue to serve the clients that I have and the clients that we'll get in 2024. So it's going to be a busy year. Dude, you're so humble, man. Like, you know, like a book sales, like you're going to sell 5,000 copies or something. You got a number, like what would be a good number of book sales? What would, like, just throw something out there. What would you think? I mean, 5,000 would be, that would be an incredible amount. <laughs> yeah. No, That'd be Amazon, awesome. Amazon, they get they get their share for sure, but I'm five sure. thousand would be awesome. Ah, absolutely, and it's it's worth it. It's a phenomenal book, Corey. Listen, thanks so much for being on the show, man. Always good to have you on here, and uh, I'm excited to do some work with you. I think we're going to be doing an event soon coming up together and some other yep. things. So, yep. really looking forward to that. But again, thanks for being on the show. Round two, this is second time, man. We're going to have to get you on here again, and we will close our gaps on our wavelength. I believe that. We got it. We got it. We got to work better. That was embarrassing, but it's fun. It was fun. It was funny the way. Corey, All thanks right. so much, man. We'll see you soon. Bye. All right, everybody, make sure you come back every Tuesday for episodes throughout the new year. Again, hope your new year is off to a great start. Be sure to pick up that book at trustgap.com. And again, thanks to our sponsor, SPI Logistics, for making it possible. Success.spi3pl.com. Check them out. And we'll see you again next time around. This is Standing Out. I'm Trey Griggs. See ya.